نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبد الله ورسوله أرسله ربه بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار I bear witness that there is none worthy of our worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the seal of the prophets and the final messenger to all of humanity. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, there is none to misguide. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves astray, there is none to guide aright. Wa ba'd, yaqul Allah ta'ala fi kitabihi al-kareem wa huwa azdaq al-qailin, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا. So today, inshallah, we'll talk about Jannah. Is there anyone here who doesn't want to go to Jannah? I'm not going to ask anyone to raise their hands because I know every single one of us would like to go to Jannah. So now, the problem is, yes, we would like to go to Jannah, but for you to go to Jannah, you have to go through al maut A person has to die first to go to Jannah. If you'd like to go up the CN Tower to enjoy the beauty of Toronto, to see the Lake Ontario, you need to take the elevator to go to the last floor to be able to have this fantastic view. People are scared of the grave. They don't want to die because they don't know what to expect in the grave, right? So we agree that Jannah is the ultimate place. This is the best place. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Jannah in different ways in the Quran. He describes the quality of life, the food, the drink, the clothes, everything in Jannah. There are so many different descriptions, but I think for me, Wallahu alam, the description that stands out as the best is that la yabuuna anha hiwala. The people of, the, of Jannah, they wouldn't want to leave and go somewhere else. So what does that mean? Well, as I said, in dunya, you change your mind all the time. Bad things happen all the time. Even if you enjoy something, it's a temporary enjoyment, right? Yeah, and say for example, I'm sure everyone here in this masjid, they're happy, they're dancing in the streets because you can always fill up your tank under one dollar per liter, right? At most gas stations, 90, 80, 98 cents per liter, right? But the problem with that is you will be crying in two weeks when the prices go up again to 135 cents per liter as it used to be a few days ago, right? So it's a temporary thing. Some of us would get attached to a person, your friends, your teachers, but at some point, they either have to leave you, go somewhere else, or you have to leave them and go somewhere else, right? So this is the quality of life here. You love someone so much, a relative or a friend or someone, they either die and go to the next life, or you die and leave them behind. So this is the quality of life in this world. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Jannah, لا يبغون عنها حب. You don't want to go anywhere else. And the reason why this description is so amazing is because, think about it for a moment. Uh, back in the 1950s and 60s and 70s, those of you who are old enough, you remember the phones, you know, the dial phones, zero, five, four, you know, that was terrible. So now in the 1990s when Nokia released their you know, wireless phones with the antenna, it was as big as a shoe. People were excited, they threw their tire phones in the garbage, they were happy with their phones, the new ones, the big ones. Then the phones, they started to get smaller and smaller, then you ended up with a touch phone, wireless, and this is amazing, Android and so on and so forth. So over time, people lose interest in something and they look for something else. Because they are bored with something, they look for something better. You are desperate to uh, rent a, a townhouse. So after some time, you know, it's getting small for the kids, the neighbors are complaining, I want to move to a detached house or semi-detached house. 
You move to a semi-detached house, I want to move to a detached house. Move to a detached house, so I want a bigger detached house. Because the person is never happy, is never satisfied. So you start with a manual car, and you are happy because now you don't have to ride your bike anymore. Now you use the you know, manual car, you're happy, excited. After a number of years, you're bored of the automatic, you know, the manual car, you want to an automatic car, right? So you're fed up with the Fiat car, you want to move to Dodge Caravan, now you want to move to Toyota, you want to move to Honda. People always lose interest, and they will want to do something better and something more exciting, right? People are never settled, people are never satisfied. They lose interest, they get bored, so they want something better. But the interesting thing about Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يبغون عنها حولا. Once you go there, you wouldn't want to move somewhere else because this is the finest, this is the ultimate place to be. Right? So this is an amazing description of Jannah. The Prophet sallallahu he always made dua for Jannah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka jannah wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal. Even sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was told that you will not be in Jannah, you will be in Al-Firdaus Al-A'la, the highest place of Jannah, but still he was making dua for Jannah every day. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Hadith Al-Sahah asked one of the Sahaba, مَاذَا تَقُولُ فِي دعائك? So the Sahaba said, what do you say in your dua? So the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, when I do my tashahud, before salam, I say, Ya Allah, give me Jannah and protect me from Jahannam. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, يعني حولها أدندن أنا ومعاذ I and Mu'adh and by extension all the other Sahaba This is what we pray for, we pray for Jannah and to be protected from the Jahannam So even the Prophet Sallallahu himself and even the Sahaba and Mubashirin bil Jannah they used to pray for Jannah because they love it so much, they, they would like to be there They want to move away from suffering and pain and the difficulties that we see in, in this world There is no justice here, there is suffering but they want to move to that better place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Nabi sallam describes Jannah in so many hadith. And he says, in Jannah, مَا لَا عَيْنُ الرَّأَةُ وَلَا أُذْنٌ سَمْعَةُ In Jannah, there are things that your, you know, your brain cannot comprehend. It's beyond your comprehension, beyond your imagination. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says it in the Quran, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ عَيْنِ You cannot possibly comprehend what Allah has prepared for you in Jannah. It's beyond, we are not equipped to understand what Allah has prepared for the believers in Jannah. If you were to see Jannah or understand what Jannah looks like, your brain would probably explode. Because you are not equipped to think about these things, they are beyond your comprehension. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Jannah in very generic terms to bring Jannah to our level of understanding. He talks about rivers of honey, rivers of this and that. He talks about kolos, min sundusin wa istabrat. He speaks about the quality of life, he speaks about food. But this is not actually the reality of Jannah. For example, walillahi al al if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to speak, for example, about cell phones in the Quran. I'm just giving an example so don't, you don't have to shoot me. Uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to describe cell phones in the Quran and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to use wireless internet or touch screen or router or like you wouldn't know what Allah is talking about. Like this is beyond you. Even if like 150 years ago you would describe a top-notch wireless cell phone, touch phone to Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone himself, his head would, would have probably exploded because he wouldn't know what you're talking about. What is router, wireless, touch screen, what is the, what are you talking about, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this uh, terminology to bring the understanding of Jannah to your level. But this is not actually the reality of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing it down to our level of understanding, but Jannah is beyond this. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ثَمَّ رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا Even in Surah Insan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it indescribable. There, there are no words that can describe how beautiful Jannah is. The Prophet sallallahu says in the hadith in Zayh Muslim that Jannah has a hundred levels. There are a hundred levels in Jannah. And the Prophet sallallahu says the distance between one level and the next level 
is like the distance between the samawati wal earth, like the distance between the heavens and the earth. Well, Nabi Sallallahu says that a person will be in their level in Jannah, let's say level 53. Then the person is raised to a next level, so they get an upgrade. And the person will say, Ya Allah, why have I been like raised to the next level? And Allah will say, this is because of your child, your son or daughter. They made dua for you or they gave zakah or sadaqah on your behalf and Allah raises you in rank. So you will get the barakah of your children in Jannah as well. With the food, the food is close, within reach. So if you like a fruit, it will come to you. If you like a bird, it's going to fall in front of you. With all the biryani and all the beautiful things in Jannah, it will come to you. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to stand in the kitchen for four hours to cook something. It will be right there. Once you think of, of something, it will be right in front of you. And the rivers, the running rivers. And the clothes, Sundusin wa istabraq. And the person, they don't need to go to the washroom. Everything will come out in the form of musk, as the Prophet ﷺ says. So you don't have to worry about going to the washroom or maghas and and fawar and just like in this dunya, all the suffering and the pain in this dunya. <coughs> and the beautiful thing about Jannah, Nabi Sallallahu says in the hadith in Al-Tabarani, Abi Ya'la, that in Jannah, we will all be at the height of Adam alayhi salam, 60 cubes or 60 feet high. And this is particularly good news for someone who is short like me. We will be the same height, right? And the Prophet Sallallahu says in this hadith, we will be as beautiful as Yusuf alayhi salam. And we will be at the age of Isa alayhi salam, 30 years old. Everyone will be 30 years old. And we'll speak, all of us will speak the tongue of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi who will talk Arabic. Everyone will talk Arabic in Jannah. And now subhanAllah, this is amazing. Like, you would be in Jannah, you would be 33 years old or 30 years old. Your dad would be 30 years old, your grandfather would be 30 years old, your children 30 years old, everyone would be 30 years old. Can you imagine your dad, your grandpa would be your age and you sit and talk to them and you chat with them and have a good time with them? Well, this is beautiful. This is amazing. Is there anything better that you can get in Jannah? Yes, there is no suffering, there is no pain in, in Jannah. People will not have cancer, people will not suffer like here, diabetes and this and that, and subhanAllah. People will not die in Jannah. And the Prophet was asked about sleep, are people going to sleep in Jannah? And he said, no. People will not sleep in Jannah because sleep is the twin brother of death and there's no death in Jannah. You will be up all, all the time in Jannah enjoying what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for you in Jannah. But here, if you live a good life, you are always scared that something bad will happen to you. You will die. And the ulama say, the three most critical times in your life as a human being, number one, the day you are born, right? Because you are born, you can't see well, you don't know anyone around you. All you hear is someone screaming, your mom is in pain, you know, the contractions. She is in pain, she is crying. Your dad is crying because of the bills. He has a heart attack and he cries. And the two families are fighting over the, what are we going to name the baby? So the, the husband's family will say, we'll name him after the grandpa, Borai. <laughs> and the mom's family, they fight. No, we'll name him after the grandma, Atris. And they have big fights, right? SubhanAllah. So you don't know anyone. All you hear is crying. You don't, know, you don't recognize anyone. Even the doctors and the nurses, SubhanAllah, they have masks. You know, Mano, we have some doctors here. And the reason is, if something goes wrong in the surgery, everyone has a mask, so you can't recognize anyone. They can run away, right? And you can't get them, right? This is the reason why they have masks at hospitals, regardless of what doctors and nurses say. This is the right reason, right? And the second situation, which is very critical and difficult in someone's life, is when they die. Because they don't know what to expect. What am I going to be? Like, what, what will the condition be in the grave? I'll probably be there for thousands of years, millions of years before Qiyamah, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Yawm al Qiyamah, to be risen from the, you know, from the grave and to stand for judgment, you don't know which way to take. Are you going to go this way or that way? It's a terrible situation. So birth, death, rising for judgment, and some people say, well, the day I got married, this is also a very critical and it's a terrible day. 
And the reason was they looked for the expiry date on the marriage contract, they couldn't find it, and this was terrible for them. But subhanAllah, if you marry the right person, this is good news. If you marry the wrong person, then your life would be terrible, right? And this explains, you know, the three most critical situations in someone's life, the day you're born, the day you die, the day you're risen for judgment. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave salam to Isa alayhi salam and Yahya alayhi salam in Surah Maryam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيَّ يَوْمَ وُلِدْتُ وَيَوْمَ أَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ أُبْعَثُ حَيَّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showered Isa and Yahya alayhi salam with rahmah and mercy the day they were born, the day they will die, and the day they will stand for qiyamah, for judgment. The three most critical situations. Allah gave them peace in those times. So in Jannah, there is no suffering, there is no pain. You know, people who have cancer, diabetes, brain tumors. SubhanAllah, about two weeks ago, I visited someone in Markham, a 14-year-old, you know, guy, and SubhanAllah, he has cancer, and, and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how long the person will die, and the doctors don't have good news. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows who will go first and, and who will stay. But in Jannah, no suffering, no pain, even jealousy and hatred. Here in dunya, you fight with someone over business, they hate you. They don't want to talk to you. Even brothers and sisters, they, fought, they fight over inheritance. They don't talk to their own flesh and blood. But in Jannah, you would be facing people face to face all the time. You are not turning your back on anyone because there is no jealousy, no hatred in your heart. And this is good news. In Jannah, you will be united with all family members. Like, I lost my dad back in 2004, and I miss him so much. Just like any one of you, you know, who lost their dad or granddad or grandma, they miss them, they would love to see them. So being united with the loved ones, this is a amazing news. You'll be with them, same age, you'll be having a good time. Alhamdulillah, this is amazing. Is there anything better than this? Yes. You will be united with the Sahaba of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All the great Sahaba that we read about, Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman, al ashram Mubashirin bil Jannah, the people of Badr, the people of Hudaybiyah. You will see them and you will talk to them. Is there anything better than this? Yes. We'll talk in the second khutbah. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to give us the best in this life and the best in the life to come. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عبد ورسول ورسله ربه رحمة للعالم. Yes, there are more important things to enjoy in Jannah more than seeing your family members who passed away and seeing the صحابة كرام and talking to them. What about standing in front of محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and shaking his hand and drinking from his الكوثر and and talking to them and and سبحان الله they say in Jannah. When you go and shake Muhammad Sallallahu hand, and he will say, Wa alayka salam ya fulan, and he will mention your name, Ibrahim, Muhammad. And why? Because you used to give him salah and salam in dunya, so he will recognize your name in Jannah. So always give salah and salam to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in dunya, so he will recognize your name in Jannah, inshaAllah ta'ala. And subhanAllah, in this dunya, when you go for Hajj and Umrah, and after the end of the program, you go to Medina, you pray in Masjid al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Medina, and you go to, you know, the Qabr, the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu you stand in front of the Urfa, and it says, Huna salah wa salam ala Rasulullah. And people start to cry just because they see the sign. Here you can give salam to Muhammad Sallallahu and Abu Bakr and Umar. And you start to cry. You don't see anything. You just see the sign that says you can give salah salam to the Prophet Sallallahu here, and you start crying. And you're standing in front of a wall. You don't see anything. You don't see anyone. But now imagine in Jannah, you stand in front of Muhammad Sallallahu himself, in person, and you shake his hand. You drink from his kawthar and you talk to him. And you talk to Yusuf Alayhi Salaam, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, all the great Sahaba, great prophets that we read about in our Islamic schools or weekend school. And SubhanAllah, all these emotions will come and SubhanAllah, this is a, I mean, it's hard to describe the feeling when you stand in front of Muhammad Sallallahu and shake his hand. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this honor in Jannah al Firdaus Ya Rabbil Alameen. Is there anything which is greater than seeing the Sahaba Karam and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophets? Yes. There is a hadith in a Tirmidhi where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that on Yawm al Qiyamah Allah will call out to people of Jannah 
Is there anything else that I can give you to make you happier in Jannah? So the people who respond and say, Ya Allah, what more can we ask for? Alam tubayyud wa jahana, didn't you brighten our faces? Didn't you put a smile on our face? Didn't you protect us from Jahannam? Didn't you do this? Didn't you do that? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Yes, there is something more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yarfa'u al-hijab. He will lift the barrier so people will look straight to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see His face in Jannah. فَمَا رَأَوْ شَيْئًا أَفْضَلَ مِنْ جَالِكَ They wouldn't have enjoyed anything better than looking at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who would look at His face in Jannah Rabbi Alameen. How do you make it there? So there are some requirements. There is some price you have to pay here in this dunya. Number one, you have to work for it, right? You have to work for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end of Surah Kahf, after saying, they would be in Jannah forever, and they wouldn't wish to go anywhere else. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you want to go there, if you want to get this, this is what you need to do. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ if you want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meet the reward in Jannah, you have to do, you have to work. You have to work for it. Number two, you have to love Muhammad sallallahu and follow his example. The Prophet sallallahu says in Bukhari, all my ummah will go to Jannah except those who refuse. So the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, who would refuse to go to Jannah? And the Prophet says, all my ummah will go to Jannah except those who refuse. Whoever obeys me, they go to Jannah. Whoever refuses to obey me and follow my sunnah, my example, they have refused to go to Jannah. And number three and finally for today, there are so many things, but today, uh, taking care of your parents. This is your bridge to Jannah. And by extension, your father and mother-in-law because they also take the place of your parents. So by extension, take care of your father and mother-in-law. And the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the bridge to Jannah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, is your mom alive, your parents alive? And the Prophet, and this is Ibn Majah and Nisa'i, the person said, yes, my mom is alive. And the Prophet ﷺ says, ilzam rijlayha fathamma al-jannah. Stick to her feet, because Jannah is right there. وَخَابَ وَخَسَرْ مَنْ أَدْرَكَ وَالِدَيْهَا وَحَدَهُمَا فَلَمْ يُدْخِلَاهُ الْجَنَّةِ A person is a loser if they live with their parents or one of them and they don't take them to Jannah. There are so many hadith, but this is enough for today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give a Jannah to Firdaus and the Shafa of Muhammad sallallahu and to make us among those who will look at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah, drink from Al-Kawthar with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give his shafa'a, ameen, ameen, ya rabbal alameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan, wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan, wa qina al-nar, wa sallillahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, wa akhirin as-salam.